subsidize more and more special interests. What we should have been doing is subsidizing the safety of those passengers on that Amtrak plane, a train yesterday. And of course, Ashley, we don't know yet what caused that derailment. We don't know if it was a specific problem with infrastructure. Well, we know that the train was going uh, 106 miles an hour at the time of the crash. Uh, welcome back, folks. It's time for the Molesburg panel. Jane Velez Mitchell, founder of JaneUnchained.com and author of the New York Times bestseller, Exposed, The Secret Life of Jody Arias, and Larry Elder, radio host and, of course, the author of Dear Father, Dear Son, Two Lives, Eight Hours. And, uh, Jane, I know you ride the, uh, that, that, that train route on Amtrak uh, back and forth to D.C. quite often. But, you know, for to have uh, Steve Israel, a very prominent Democrat, to exploit the tragedy, blaming it on a lack of uh, uh, attention to infrastructure, is just outrageous. Well, it is a lack of attention to infrastructure, with all due respect, Steve. They had a master plan in 2010 for the Northeast Corridor that looks fabulous. Bullet trains, the kind that you see in Japan. Oh, everything high-tech and high-speed and automated, which would have prevented an accident like this. When did it happen? It didn't. It's all on the drawing boards. Yet we can spend billions of dollars on ridiculous research programs with the National Institutes of Health and all sorts of make work pork barrel programs, but the Northeast Corridor, the very heart and center of the universe, the epicenter of power in D.C., the epicenter of money in New York City, we can't have the best rail infrastructure in the world? Well, la uh, uh, Larry may know, I, and I think, uh, you know, it was the same <laughs> baloney when Obama would go down to Florida and talk about this high-speed rail service from here to there. There was no way on the face of the earth that ever was going to happen. It was never a reality. It would never work in this country. And everybody knew it at the time. Uh, but, but again, to say it was this accident was because of a lack of infrastructure, this accident was caused because the train was going 100 around the curve. That's what the, the speed was 50, Larry. What, what did uh, Rahm Emanuel say? Never, Never let a waste crisis an opportunity go to, go to, waste. to exploit a tragedy. Uh, right. Th this is this is an opportunity to to uh, to expand the government, to get the government more more involved in a sector that the government should not have been involved in the first place. Amtrak loses money hand over fist. Uh, it never should have been run by the government. And I'd like to see the the safety record of government run railroads versus privately run railroads. And let's see which one is superior, Jane. Well, let's take a look at the Japanese rail system that has an incredible safety record and also happens to be automated. Had we improved our infrastructure, this accident would not have happened because if you had been completely automated, there are safeguards in place that automatically slow the train. But Jane, we had, uh, there was a whole stimulus bill under Obama and the Democrats in 09, and there was a trillion dollars in infrastructure. What that's, happened that's to it? Well, That's the whole point, Steve. We spend more money than Europe does on infrastructure, and the left wants to spend even more. Again, more money than, than Western-style European democracies spend on infrastructure, and it's still not enough. Larry, it took me seven hours when I drove from Washington, D.C. to New York just the other day. We need a rail system, and we need the best rail system between the two most important cities if in the world, need... New York City and Washington, D.C. What's Jane, wrong if with the that? Need, Jane, if the need is there, then the private sector should step up. Pass the hat. Have some of your rich buddies invest and build a system. <laughs> oh, were they supposed to, what are they supposed to do? Just charge onto the tracks and throw off the Amtrak trains and say, we're going to privatize all the rails? Well, yes, it's that's exactly what they ought to do. Same as, same as we got uh, the government out of, out of running ra rail, railroads, running, uh, running airlines, we should deregulate. And, these, we, have, uh, and we have FedEx rail. and we have UPS and we have competition that, that, you know, that took a lot of business away from another failed business that the government runs that loses billions hand over fist, and that's the post office. They don't belong in there, they don't belong in the railroads, and that's why airline travel is much more safe than railroad travel. Don't go away. We're coming back with more of the panel on The Steve Malzberg Show. If we're going to change how John Boehner and Mitch McConnell think, we're going to have to change how our body politic th thinks, which means we're going to have to change how the media reports on these issues and how people's impressions of what, it, what it's like to struggle in this economy looks like and how budgets connect to that. And, and that's a, it's a hard process. 
Yeah, it's a hard process. Welcome back. Mulsberg panel. Jane Velez Mitchell is here and Larry Elder is here as well. So that was Georgetown University, guys. And that was a Barack Obama talking about poverty and how Fox News, man, that Fox News, they always find people who want, don't want to work. It amazes me, he says. They tick me off the people they find. Uh, they just want Obama phones. But I don't know where they find these people. They don't really exist. It's Fox News. And then he says, we have to change the way reporting is done on these. You see, uh, any other president, you would say, well, he would like to see it changed. But this guy's probably drawing up an executive order right now, and he's about to <laughs> sign it, Larry. <laughs> You know, I, I just love it when Obama talks about relating to the poor. This is a guy who grew up in the mean streets of Hawaii, went to the finest prep school, Punahou in Hawaii. His grandparents who raised him, uh, his grandfather was a successful salesman. His mom was a, uh, an executive at a bank. His mother had a, a Ph.D. in anthropology. His father had a Ph.D. Uh, in, in economics. Uh, and Obama, I don't think he ever set foot in, in, a, in a public school. He went to Oxy out here in L.A., then he went to Columbia, then to Harvard, then he worked for a, uh, a pricey uh, <laughs> law firm in Chicago where the starting salary for a 25-year-old is 160 grand. And here he is talking about relating to the poor. It's a joke. In his autobiography, by the way, he never mentioned that he was raised on food stamps, which he suddenly discovered during the campaign of 2008. Well, Larry, Larry. In, in all fairness, Jane, I'll let you go, but in all fairness, he did lock himself in a van and smoke pot and they shut the well, window so that, that the smoke wouldn't escape and he did steal the and go out of turn so he could get some more drags on the cigarette i mean let's give him that jane are you suggesting larry <laughs> that you have to be poor or born into poverty to talk about poverty because then you wouldn't be able to talk about poverty because i don't think you're poor larry well, my, my father worked two jobs as a janitor, Jane, uh, and he uh, does not know who his biological father is. Left home when he was 13 years old. Uh, his mother was illiterate, so I know a little bit about it. Well, I think we all have stories that we can talk about that relate to poverty. My mother I'm came just, here from Puerto Rico at the age does of 12 on a boat. But Obama doesn't. So let I'm your just saying Obama was not poor. Steve, Obama was not poor right. and, in my opinion, lied uh, in the campaign trail in 2008. That he and his mom were on food stamps. How do you write an autobiography where you talk about uh, smoking dope and, and doing cocaine and not mention that you were on food stamps if, in fact, you were on food stamps? Well, it's that, phony, it's hypocritical, Jane. That's my problem with it. Let's talk about the real issue, income inequality in America, which is going to be the issue of the upcoming presidential election. And got, and got worse under this president. And got worse under this president. <laughs> well, it did. It's been, it's been getting worse for a long time, and I think its force is far greater than President Obama. I think we're headed to a world where we're going to have literally a 500 corporations and, Jane, and the Jane, rest of the Jane, people are going to be flipping burgers. Jane, tell, tell us what you would do about income inequality. What's your policy? What I would do is have yeah. real capitalism, not corporate socialism. What I would... That? Take the thumb off the scale that big multinational conglomerates have on our government. Right now, we have a government that is basically but, run but, by corporations, and that's but, corporate but, socialism. But Jane, that's not capitalism. Jane, what would you do to solve the problem? How would you, how would you give people who don't have the haves? Make haves? I would prevent any lobbying on Capitol Hill. I would prevent anybody who is in industry from going into the agency that's supposed to regulate Jane? that industry. I would well, prevent would, anybody right. who's in an Jane? agency on, from Larry, leaving to go, go to the private Larry, sector. I would guess the first step so, would be educate our children, but that's just me. So Jane would repeal the First Amendment because there is a right to redress grievances in the First Amendment, which means lobbying. So you'd repeal the First Amendment, Jane. Look, corporations control our government. Corporations that's the provide jobs. Yeah, but, but let me just say this. We have a lot of mom-and-pop capitalism that's getting squished. I'm all in favor because of capitalism. Because of overregulation. That's yeah. why they, and no, Obamacare and forcing them to do things no, and telling them what to do. because corporations are forcing them out. You don't have any small coffee shops anymore. All you got is Starbucks. Okay. Jane, why do you suppose corporations lobby? They lobby because of the regulations. When you move the regulations, you got nothing to lobby about. Listen, we are with this trade pack going to have a, basically a coup d'etat, a corporate coup d'etat, where the average person is going to have no power. We're going to essentially hand the, the, the entire uh, car and the, the, the driver's seat over to corporate, uh, 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 the let, corporate right, world. Let, let me give this radical assessment of, uh, of haves and have-nots and two Americas and all that uh, baloney. The, the fact of the matter is over half of our kids graduate high school and can't read. How the hell are they going to get a job if they can't read? Corporations and all that is baloney. Teach our kids. 
have freedom of choice for education, have competition, get government and teachers unions the heck out, and let kids get an education like they used to get. Jane, final word. Okay, public education used to be the level playing field. Everybody graduated with a good education. That's not true anymore. We're, we're competing in this country against other countries in Asia where the educational system well, is so much better. Well, then you got to do what better. I said, so fix support, it. So you support vouchers then? You support vouchers? Vouchers, you want yes the or money no. To the child, I don't the think other way that, that That's a no. Jane Velez, Larry Elder, see ya. Bye. <laughs>